Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Last time, and actually the last two or three times, we, we worked on the sock monkey. And uh, not going to talk much about that painting because I really feel like we covered that in the last three shows. But I did want you to see the final product. He's really happy there with his duck. And uh, I really spent the rest of the time at home finishing up this painting by just going over the details, a few more highlights. But it was basically the same type of procedure that I did on all three shows. Today, we're going back to fruit. And I'm going to paint uh, pineapple. Pineapple is a symbol of hospitality. It was such a rare fruit that, uh, especially in colonial times, people were really um, honored when they would serve that to their guests. So I'm going to paint that. It's a fun fruit. It's got a lot going on. And it's very busy, so I'm just going to get started. I've sketched it already. So I'm going to start painting in the dark crevices of the pineapple by just using some purple. Why am I using purple? Because you know that I love it and because it's a good dark color for these nooks and crannies of the pineapple. And I'm just going to rough in the little shapes here. And I mean rough. I don't want them to be too symmetrical. That doesn't happen in nature. But I do need an outline, a good, need a guide. Otherwise, I'll get lost. This is going to be kind of a decorative work. I don't know if I'll even do the background. And if I do, I may paint it white. It's OK to be decorative. Just have fun and paint. I took the reference photo outside about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I take a lot of my pictures of fruit and still lifes outside. And the reason I do that is I like to have one single light source. It's coming on the left-hand side of the pineapple. And the easiest way to get one single light source without um, having any interference is to, to use the sun. So I, I took it outside. And uh, it, it's good to take it later in the afternoon rather than midday so you get more of a dramatic light source, light change. So it's going to be really light on the left-hand side, almost washed out. You can tell by the reference photo, and then darker as it comes along. I, of course, won't be a slave to the reference photo. There's a lot going on in my backyard, and I'm certainly not going to paint that. But I uh, did want the pineapple in there. So you can see I'm just scribbling these little shapes. Gives me a map to know where to go. And just the little outlines give you a good indication of, of the shape of this fruit. Somebody was talking about, you know, you like to paint fruit so much, you eat a lot of fruit. And um, I don't really. <laughs> I usually, if it's sweet, it's chocolate or something that I eat. But uh, I sure do like to paint it. OK, that's a good start. All right, now the center of a pineapple. So you've got a good idea of the basic shape already. And uh, one of the things, if you look at a pineapple and you look in all the nooks and crannies, it looks pretty dark in the center of each little crevice. But then you see, depending on how ripe the pineapple is, if you, in the reference photo, you can tell that at the top of the pineapple, it's got more green in the crevices. As it ripens, everything's more golden. I'm going to pretend it's not quite as ripe as that one, because I want to infuse more color. And I want it to have more pizzazz than, than the pineapple. I had, I had let it sit out too far, and it just it got really ripe. My studio really smelled good, though. OK, so we're pretending. <laughs> And you know what? If you're an artist, you can pretend. That's half the fun. And if you're not an artist, you can still pretend. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, add some of the green that we would see if it wasn't quite so ripe. And I'm going to add some sap green and some permanent green together. And I'm going to put that right next to the purple. We're starting from the deepest crevices. We're basically working from the cracks to the flatter surfaces, although there aren't, there aren't that much, that isn't that much of an area that's that flat. OK, so I'm almost outlining every little purple area with green. 
Now, on the lighter side of the pineapple, I could use a lighter color, but I'm not going to do that yet. I think I'm going to I'm going to try that maybe with some of the ochres rather than the, the crevice part, because otherwise I'll blend that away. The trick is to vary the pressure and a little bit of the strokes so it doesn't look, I mean, what you're doing is outlining each little segment. And um, the, the thing is, you just don't want it to look like you did that at the end. You can do it as long as you don't make it look real obvious. So we've got some green in there. Now this is a smaller pineapple. The last one I painted was, this is a 24 by 36 cam, uh, canvas, and I thought this would be a good size for a study. And you know I like to work really big, so the, the last one I did was 36 by 48. And I thought about doing one that size for the show, and I thought, no, I'd really like to see you guys to be able to see it get to uh, almost finished state in one show, so I decided I'd, I'd probably better off doing the smaller size. And for some people, this would actually be a large painting. My sense of scale has always been, I make things, when I was a kid or whenever, whenever I was drawing, I always made things bigger than they were. That's just how I see them. And uh, fatter. <laughs> Everything I do seems, tends to have more form. And I think I told uh, somebody in the studio one time that they said something about painting big, and I said, no, it's not that, that the items are painting big, it's just that this is, this is just my life, it seems that large. The other thing is, is the older I get, I don't want to have to get out reading glasses to see a little tiny speck of something on here. So probably by the time I'm a really old lady, the paintings are going to be huge. They're, they're just going to be murals, murals. I'll have, to have, <laughs> I'll have to have help, some sort of device to help me paint something like that. But I'll find a way. And I'm not really paying too much attention to these little lines, and they're kind of squirrely, and they're all over the place, and that helps them have some interest. If I was being too precise, um, they'd be boring. In my own paintings, when I'm criticizing them, I forgive drawing errors, I forgive a lot of things, as long as it's not boring. I think we'll. And I'm adjusting shapes that I missed the first time around as I go. These are really nice, pretty cool colors. But you know me, the red's coming. And you look at all that gold on a pineapple and go, where's the red? Well, it's there, especially on the right side of the pineapple. If you look at the reference photo, it's got more of a red orange side to it. And uh, the left side is more golden. That's where I'll do some of the, the color changes there. I thought this would be kind of fun to do, and I may leave it this way, with a white background. And so it would have that kind of watercolory look with just a real simple background. We'll see, though. That, that's my intent right now, but I don't know where it's going to go when I end up. Usually I have a fairly good idea of where I'm going, but I always leave room for changing my mind. Okay, so that's, that's getting a good sense of, uh, that, that looks really strange. See, <laughs> I, can look, see I, I get to see in the monitor, it's my mirror, and I can see from a distance what, what the painting is looking like. And you are getting that sense of texture, and you're getting the sense of, of all that stuff going on. But just in the blue and green state, it's, it's, it's pretty wild looking. It looks like a honeycomb. Okay, well, now I'm going to add some yellow ochre. And I might just do straight yellow ochre with a dirty brush. That might just do it. If it doesn't, 
I'll change it. Well, you know what? Now, now I need to maybe infuse some red. So I already changed my mind. I'm going to add a little bit of this Perlin Scarlet. Should have cleaned my knife off first, but no. I didn't feel like it. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice, rich 70s orange. Yeah, I had a, I had a phone this color uh, when I first moved out of the house. Yep, burnt orange. Match the carpet in my apartment. Okay. Yep. And I like that color. All right, so I'm going to wipe my knife or, and my brush just a little bit. Keep it semi-dirty. And just the right side of the pineapple is going to get this red touch to it. And where do I see some of the darker areas? Maybe just up at the top here. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a little dark right there. You can tell I'm being real scientific with these brush strokes. I am just laying it down. Where I see some dark side of this, the dark side of the pineapple, um, that sounds like a Pink Floyd title. It's, it's, uh, the dark side of the pineapple is actually going to be a lot redder than it looks in real life, and that's just that's my personal preference. But any of those dark little areas, those dark blobs, are going to be this red tone rather than a, a blackish gray. That, that's what you see in the reference photo. Now, I can't put this same color on the light side or it won't have any form, or it won't have as much form. Okay. Now, the temptation is to put a lot of this everywhere, and I can't do that. So I'm going to go grab some yellow ochre. Better wipe my knife this time or I'll have too much red. Even for me. OK, I'm going to grab some straight yellow ochre, not clean my brush so that there's a little bit of red left. And where do I see some of that? That, that looks good right here. I probably should have cleaned it a little more than I did. But maybe it'll work its way out. And if it doesn't, it's not. Then I need to wipe it on my paper towel. OK. Yeah, that's better. Had a little problem with my medium today. I opened a new bottle, and I didn't shake it. And so it's, it's a lot runnier than I should have shaked it first. But no, I didn't. So it's runnier than it normally would be. I don't think it'll hurt anything. I've had a lot of calls from the Monterey area and emails, and I, I just want to tell you guys thank you. for. I really appreciate your input, and, it, and it's great to know you're out there watching the show. Okay, we got this golden side here, and I need to start lightening that up because it's just not quite. And what I'm going to do is add some white, but that will dull the yellow ochre. So I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre, move it over. I'm going to add some white. And that just makes a real wimpy, lighter ochre. That's not what I want. So I need to add more warmth to that in order for it to be a good, strong color. So I think, you know, I have, two, I have a lot of, of ways of warming it up. And I thought about doing the, uh, it was toss up between the Indian yellow and the cad yellow deep. And I think I'm going to take the cad yellow deep. The Indian yellow is brighter and could have more of a potential impact, but the cad yellow deep is opaque. Ew. I'm going to have to have some help here. Um, the cad yellow <laughs> deep is opaque, and uh, I didn't want something that was see-through at this stage in the game. OK, I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. That's better. OK, now I have a lighter version. So it's lighter in value than this, this here, but it's, and it's still got some brightness to it. So every time you add white, if you still want it to be bright, you're going to have to add some sort of warmth, yellow probably, or gold back into it. Again, I need to wipe my paper towel, wipe this on the paper towel so that I get rid of the excess. 
This is one of those cases where I'm not using a bunch of different brushes right now. Usually you see me pick up all these clean brushes and I'm using a dirty brush and I'm cons you know, keeping the, the paint. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Okay. Um, using a dirty brush so that I've got a tail end of one color on every little bit that I'm doing. Okay, that's good. I like that. I'm going to infuse just a little more brightness into it by getting some cad yellow deep. And I think I need to clean it a little better. That's not going to be working too well. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, this side of the pineapple, the dark stuff is going to be over here. It gets really light as it gets over to this side. So what's, what I'm doing is what's, what's dark over on this side is actually the, um, on this side is actually light over here. Everybody's all re relative to their neighbor. Okay. I'm adding a little more cad yellow deep. If you get a chance, the next time you look at the reference photo, I've never, I never noticed this until I started painting pineapples, but it looks like they're little angels with their wings spread out in every little section <laughs> of the pineapple. And um, so I feel like this is just a happy, Happy little pineapple here. But then again, I see th things in the bathroom walls too. <laughs> However, one of the cameramen admitted that he has doves in his living room. <laughs> and so I didn't feel so bad. I don't know, have you ever been in a meeting and been bored silly and you start, you know, you either, you know, you can't only count the tile, you know, the tiles in the wall or when, you know, so you got to go somewhere and it's great to see what, what, what's out there in the, in the texture. We're adding a little more yellow over here. We need some kind of lime color down here too. That'd be great. I need to add some of that. Let's get let's get some wild with some of the yellows. I'll really wipe this off. I might even get a clean brush. What am I looking for in a brush here? Something that's going to be soft and and. Um, not, but not, but stiff enough to be able to handle this paint. If they're too soft, they they don't uh, spread the paint well enough. Okay, so I'm going to add some bright. That's not enough. That is not enough. Okay, I'm going for it. I'm going to grab the the Indian yellow and some white and get some loud yellow here. Now it's funny because if you look at the palette, this cad yellow deep looks a lot brighter than this Indian yellow. And of course I've contaminated this Indian yellow with a lot of its neighboring colors, but I'm going to grab just a little bit of this and mix it with this, uh, I'm going to move it up so you can see this. Um, look how that's starting to get bright and I've added that to white, so that tells you how strong that pigment is. Well, you just add a little bit. That's why if you'll notice, of all the other pigments I have, at the top of the palette, I only have a little bit of, of uh, the Indian yellow, and that's because a little bit just takes over. You don't need that much. So I really like this. I think I'm going to add this. I'm going to add even more. Let's just push it. What the heck? We're at the beginning stage. The worst that can happen is that it's too much. <laughs> and then if it's too much, I'll let it dry and I'll paint over it. I'm a little more cautious toward the end of the painting. But even then, 
Um, you know what? <laughs> if you take a chance, sometimes you could have something really cool happen. And sometimes I, you know, it's worse than it was before I started. But you never know unless you give it a shot. So I'd say take the chance. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Get another brush because I, I really think I contaminated that. Let's, where do I want to put some of this really bright yellow? The pineapple tells you where to put it. It's, it's all here. So that's bright. And I need some, I need some more neon yellow too and some, some of those greens. I'm starting to get distracted, so I have to pull myself back and say, no, we're doing this right now. There's a phthalo yellow green that I like that's a nice, shocking, loud green. And, you know, if in small doses, it's, it's very appropriate. It, a whole painting wouldn't be that great. Well, you might, you might love that, that much of it, but it's just too much for me. And you, if it's too much for me, it's too much for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, but I can make something similar to that by mixing some color, and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, need a little bit more green there. And some more ochre. Okay, so it's starting to take on some form. I still need to add a little more ochre to that, and I'm going to go back to the dirty brush and work that in. I'm purposely leaving a lot of white space in the middle until I figure out where I'm going to go with that. I actually might, I might actually dab a bunch of white and overstate these little sections and then sneak up on it because it's just too hard to fill in the little gaps. But we'll see how the ochre does. And I'm doing some really rough blending here. It's not, not a finesse piece right now. OK, so in the bottom half of each little section, it's going to be a little, usually you get a little more shadow hanging out down there. So I'm going to make that darker. I'm going to start reinstating all my darks. Right now, it still looks like a honeycomb. But if anybody's watched this show before, basically what happens is I start out with a white canvas. And it's not till about two thirds of the way into it that, that the painting starts to emerge and the magic starts happening. But you get glimpses along the way. And you know what? Even though there's not any red over on this side, I'm, I'm, I'm itching to put some red over there. Yep, we're going to add a little bit of that 70s rust to this side. Makes me happy. You'd laugh because my ho house is really very neutral, except for my paintings. I had somebody email ask me if I had all red furniture, <laughs> red everything. No. Earth tones. Maybe it's because I see so much color all day long. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Need to reestablish some of this. I'm going to do a little bit of this and not quite get it finished and move on up to the leaves and then come back and finish the pineapple so that we get, we get everything to a certain point. I want to make sure we get certain things done.
and add a little bit of light in there too. But I think I already need to reinstate some of the dark so that it makes sense. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so basically what I said was I was going to go move on to the leaves and then I was going to do all this stuff and I changed my mind about 10 times before I went there. So I'm stopping and regrouping and saying, okay, I could do all those things. But with the, the amount of time that we have in the show, I want to get the leaves to a fairly finished state, then go back and start playing with the pineapple. Otherwise, I, I might get stuck on one little thing and be there for an hour and you wouldn't like it and I wouldn't either. So, so I will switch gears and in order to do that I'm going to take a look at the reference photo and just say okay, leaves. <laughs> um, you know, really you have a, a light, left side where the light's hitting the, the pineapple so that's, that's really light. You have a medium in the middle, dark on the right hand side and underneath all the leaves. So I'm going to mix three leaf colors and uh, there's probably 20 colors in the leaves right now, but I'm going to mix three because all I need to get the basic stuff started is just three, light, medium, and dark. So I'm going to mix those colors using a combination of what we already have out there. I did some mixing studies this morning. I was comparing the greens between a lime and a pear and the yellows, the difference in yellows between lemons and pears, and there's, there's quite a bit of difference in that and uh, these leaves you just can't get a tube green or like you know like this blue green and, and expect that to work I'm gonna grab some of the permanent green and the sap green that's gonna gray it down a little bit and in order for these leaves to really look halfway realistic I'm gonna have to and, and I'm not just saying this because I like red I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to add some red to it why because red's the opposite color on the color wheel and that's going to gray it down and give it a more realistic green. So I, I grab some Perlene Scarlet, some Cad Yellow uh, Light, and I'm mixing that down. And that's a nice, that's a nice rich dark. So that's good. Need to make some room on my palette for these other greens. So 70s red, you got to go in the corner for now. My palette's falling apart today. It's just some days are like that. Okay, so now I need to make a lighter green. And as we talked about earlier, if I just add, and I'm putting it right over the red because I'm going to have to put some red in there anyway. But if I just added, well, I'll show you what happens. If I just add white to this, it's a cool green. It makes it duller. It is lighter. It is lighter in value. You look at this compared to this green. And that is going to show a value difference. But, but the greens on the leaves are very, they're more grayed down, and they're warmer. It's a warm green. Pineapples have, everything's warm on a pineapple. It's tropical. It's hot. OK, that's better. It's still too wimpy for me. Let's see, what do I want to put in there? Well, I'll try some Cad Yellow Deep. That's a good strong medium. It almost might be too light. Maybe that's the problem. So I'll add some. Why am I adding more sap green and not the? Uh, oh, that's better. Much better. Okay, I added more sap because that was a warmer green, and the other permanent green is too blue. So that's a good warm green, good medium. I may add a little of that just to influence this darker color. They have to be harmonious. So there's a fairly good dark. And uh, my husband says I always do a deli cut when I cut something. I never kind of cut it all the way through. And when I mix paint, I don't always mix them thoroughly either. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. It does add interest to, to what I'm doing. OK, so we've got a medium, a uh, medium dark. It's not really a dark dark. And I need a light. So this ochre's got to be moved over. And I'll just put it right over the yellow, grab some sap green. Wow, I got lucky. I wish I could tell you that that was, ca <laughs> that that was uh, calculated, but it wasn't. Um, now I have to make more of that because I didn't make enough light. So I will grab all this white that's here. 
a little bit more yellow, and some uh, sap green. I think I grabbed too much of that. We'll see. Yeah, I did. Ooh, that's pretty. It's not what I want, but it's pretty. Okay, when this happens, now I could get a whole tube of white out there to fix this, but that I would waste a lot of paint. So what I'm going to do is move some of this over, take some of this green that I don't want, take it over to the side, and add some white. You can tell. A lot of the times before the show, I'll come over and I'll squeeze the tube so that it's not all wonky. You know, I, I get them all nice and tidy before I get here, but this is real life. <laughs> this is what my tubes look like real life. You know, I don't squeeze from the bottom and, uh, until I have to when we get toward the end. But you know what? I'm the only one using these, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and when I first got married, my parents always had separate toothpaste, so they didn't have to worry about it. I thought that was a good idea. But actually, we have the pump kind, so I don't have to worry about that either. There's always one person that's more tidy. Okay, I'm going to add white to this and a little bit of yellow. Wow, that was so powerful, it really didn't do anything to it. So rather than suffer through that, I'm going to move most of this over. Aren't you glad to know that this still happens to me? And grab a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. Now it'll be okay. Now I'll use that green later, or maybe not. But anyway, now that's a better, that's good. I've got the right color. Yeah. So I have a dark, fairly dark. I'll probably have to have, make another, a little slightly darker color here. So I'm going to add, okay, for, instead, of, instead of dark, medium, light, I'm going to add just one more for the extra punches. I'm just going to add some purple and some cad red. If I just add purple, it's too transparent. So I'm going to add the cad red light. Ooh, that's a nice brown. I don't know if that's what I wanted, but we'll, we'll see. Now I'm just going to block in really rough shapes with the, do I want to, I may use a different, normally I use filberts, filbert brushers, and they don't have squared off edges, they're, they're uh, rounded. But for the leaves, these are very geometric type leaves, I may use a, I may use this flat brush. Nah. Going for the filbert. Okay, why didn't I pick a squared off brush? Because I need to go buy new ones. All the flat brushes that I have that are squared off, they're splayed and I would have made a mess of it. So it wasn't a case of that. That probably was the better brush to use, but um, not, it, it needed to be thrown out. So, all right, now I'm gonna go for just the dark stuff. And, and uh, again, I always start with kind of an outliney kind of thing, just so that I know where, where I'm at. Very loose. And you know what? If, if you need a little extra leaf here to make the painting better, just go for it. Put them in. Don't have to be a slave to the reference photo. Covering up my, my uh, charcoal pencil marks. I do like that going off the canvas. That's good composition. Normally, you try not to have something dead center. But you know what? This is a portrait of a pineapple. So this puppy is going to be dead center. We talked about this before. If you know the rules and you can break them and make them work, then go for it. But 
you do need to know them so that when you run into trouble, you'll know why. Okay, underneath, and, and what I'm going to do with these is that underneath each leaf is going to be the darkest part because they shade each other, and the top will be lighter. That's a basic rough outline, and I'm not going to put in every one that's there because that makes me tired. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off and go back to the lights now because they're the hardest to go over if you miss them. Okay, where's the light? There's light on this side. That's not light enough because I didn't change brushes, so I'm switching right now before I'm really in trouble. And I think it's not bright enough. I don't know if it was because my brush was muddy or because my mix was muddy. That's better. Yeah. All right, so we've got light right here. See, that's a lot better than what was there. Light on this side. I'm going to scrub, scrub out my little pencil marks there. When I scrub out, I'm applying more pressure to the canvas than when I just put this down. When I sketch it out, it's a very light pressure. So there's a lot of light on this side. Let's see. Let's just throw in some yellow here. I still think it looks a little too wimpy. I'm looking for the major light, light places. That's what's going to make this thing look halfway like little palm leaves. Gonna exaggerate some of that. We've got the light there. There needs to be a little bit of light here. All right, let's put in some medium. Yeah, I'll go for more of a dark. It's easier for me to, to go between dark and light and put the medium in last because then I have a better gauge of whether I've got it right. If you look at uh, some cartoons, they're almost just black and white. There's not even any gray. So they're strictly value. And they get that, you, you, get, you, know, you totally know what's going on. So value is important. That's dark. We need a little light there. It's the light against dark that's going to make this thing work. Oops. Okay. Now when you're this close on to something, you, you just can't see what's going on. So I'm going to take a step back and look at my mirror and, and see what's happening to my painting. And that way I can see whether the leaves are starting to take shape or whether they're just really still kind of spastic. So they're, they're somewhere, in the, somewhere in the middle. Um, you're starting to see the separation. I just need to add a little bit more here and there. And then I think what I'm going to do is go back to, because the leaves aren't as important to me um, in this stage anyway, and go back to the pineapple itself and see what I can do with that. Okay, so I'm in not bad of shape. I need to add that little limey green color. I'm going to take this yellow ochre brush because it's already got some nice yellow on there. Let's see what we're doing here. That's nice. Okay, so this needs a little... A lot of times when I'm in the studio, I actually paint this part, I'll be looking in the mirror. I don't actually look at my painting, I'm going back and forth because it gives me that distance and I can see whether I'm getting it. 
So if I look in the mirror, although it gets kind of <laughs> weird, you put stuff in the wrong place, but it, it really lets me know whether I'm on track. And also, when you're painting big, that's how you get that distance. People say, do you have, I don't have tall ceilings in my studio. For as big as I paint, my, my living room does, but my studio does not. So, uh, you know, the mirror really helps. When I have really big paintings, basically I'm on the floor trying to, you know, get to the bottom of it because I don't, I don't have the luxury of having that kind of space. So if you don't have that kind of space, don't let that be a deterrent to painting big. If you feel like painting big, Get as big as you can to get in the door. <laughs> and and um, it, the only thing I learned is you got to be able, if, if you stretch it in, in the studio, you got to be able to get it out the door. So, so the, as long as you can get it in and out the door, you're good to go. And uh, we took out the way. <laughs> My husband was good. He took out the window in my studio and put a sliding glass door so I can get bigger paintings in and out. Most people would put something like that in for people, but um, they're for people too. And the dog. Okay, so it's darker there. I need some, right where it hits here, there's lots of shadow. That's really a rough version of the leaves. And I think I need to go back to the pineapple, see what I can do with that, and then go over the whole thing. Right now, the, the pineapple's floating, so I may take some, uh, just a little bit of, a little wash of purple. And, uh, throw in a little bit of a shadow. And just blend that out. I'll probably put some other color on the canvas later, but I don't want to do that with the amount of time that we have. All right, so go by. I need, in order to get this guy back to where, where he's got some form and all that stuff's going on, I need to go back to the dark and reinstate some of that. So that means some of the purple that I lost when I was doing all this stuff. Back to these little crevices. Already this is going to start making this thing pop. Usually I pick things that aren't so busy. You know, sock monkey excluded. That was very busy. But, um, but even him, when you think about it, there's a lot of clean space. And that when I first, the first pineapple I did, it, I could only do it in small doses because it just made me tired to, to, to do something with that much detail. But, um, but uh, when I, I took a class at San Jose State years ago, an archaeology class, and they talked about the law of uniform, uniformitarianism. And I missed this on a test, and that's how I remember it. But basically, the law states that things are going to erode in the same uniform way over the same amount of time. And um, that applies to painters as well, because if you give me a pineapple, I'm going to scribble on it like I do any of my other paintings. I'm not going to sit there and make a lot of detail out of it. So if you're into detail, this, that, that's what you would do on everything you paint. And neither of them is bad or good. It's just how you paint. So if we're going to scribble this pineapple into something with form. Oh, and you know on the test? <laughs> I didn't know the answer, <laughs> so what I wrote on the test was the answer was that all archaeology students had to wear uniforms or something, and he gave me a little point for a nice try, but uh, I still missed it. That was a fun class. So I'm reinstating these darks. There are areas on every painting that I always avoid till the end. 
So the centers of these I'm avoiding. That's on purpose. Now there's avoiding certain areas because you're just waiting um, to get to that point before you address them. And there are also times when I avoid things because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And um, this is not, this is somewhere in between. Okay. You know, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. So a lot of it, it, it painting is just making a decision and sticking with it and get, you know, giving it a shot. So, okay, I'm going to try it this time, this way this time. So it's starting to get more form. It's starting to have the depth. I didn't put the little angel fairies in yet. Got to put those puppies in. And we're going to have to do some blending in order for this to be work. And that's how it starts to look happy. <clears throat> Can't have a sad pineapple. Okay, this area I made a little too dark. It really needs to stay lighter since it's on the light side of the pineapple. And um, I got carried away. So I'll see if I can't fix that with the lighter stuff. And I'm going to make this a little fatter just for the little shape. So you're, you're just making a series of adjustments to get to where you need to go. And I think I will put the light in the center and overstate that, and then come back and put the other dark little things over the top. The little angels over the top. And I need, just, I need some more white out there. I used all of everything I had. Okay. I need to make more room on this palette, but I'm not going to take time to do that. I'm just going to try to be careful when I mix. Me being careful is kind of an oxymoron, so we'll see what happens here. Now, is there enough um, difference between this and what I've already put down? This is barely. Just barely. I might overstate that with just some white. Wow. I just, you know, I have a habit of, of uh, testing the brush to see if it feels right for, for what I'm going to do. And here's one I didn't clean because <laughs> it's stiff as a board and uh, it's, it's beyond anything. So it, throw that one out. Okay, this one feels better. It's another filbert. I'm going to take some light, light and put that in the very middle. And I'm not going to touch the other colors yet until I start blending. So I'm just going to dab dab this stuff. See, I already contaminated some of that. Well, I'll just have to start blending pretty quick then. You just go to plan B and C and D and E. I've learned a lot of patience and a lot of tolerance by painting. Tolerance for my own shortcomings. Learn to say whoops and just do what you can. Wild colors. Oof. Okay, this is way, way, way too dark over here for the light side of the pineapple. So we'll have to pose some color over here. 
I got carried away. Might not be able to do anything about it while it's this wet. Want to get this covered, do some blending. Okay, I know we're getting getting further on in the program, so I'm going to start blending. Got most of these spots covered. I'm going to start in the middle and work out. But if you if you look at it, it's starting to take some form. It's starting to at least look like a pineapple. Uh, might not be exactly where I want it to go yet, but it's it's heading in that direction. At least, at least I'll have somebody walk by and say, ah, I like that banana. You know, I've had people mistake certain fruit that I've painted for other things, and I just say thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't correct them when they think it's something else. I painted a, a little, little boy going, uh, was a little girl going over the fence, and you could just see the back. She was crawling over, crawling over the fence. And you could just see the back. She had little overalls on. She had pink shoes. And everybody kept thinking it was a little boy. And they'd just tell me how much they loved the little boy. And um, I would just say thank you. At least they liked the painting. Everybody sees something different in it. So it doesn't matter what they think they, you know, what they, think they see. Okay, I'm liking that. It's better. This is one of those cases where, uh, you know, I know it's not pretty, but you got to have a paper towel in one hand and a brush in the other, and you have to keep wiping as you go along. Or, or, or a rag. So I'm blending this all into each other, but each, each little section, got to do some wiping after each time, otherwise it's, it's too muddy. I'm just blending the warm part first, and I will blend the cool colors after. And I'm still doing a real loose blend, because part of the fun of this whole thing is, is all the little swirl texture things that I couldn't have made up that just happen when you paint. These brush strokes are your handwriting, so, and that's what, that's what shows that it's a Shannon. Somebody said, well, how do you get a style? Well, you just keep painting. It, it, it comes to you. Oh, I like that. I get favorite little sections. Got to blend faster. <laughs> OK, I'm going to finish this up and blend. You can see that it definitely is starting to take some form. You know, I, I, I don't know. I've, anybody that's watched the show know, knows that I'm just so influenced by music. I had a music upbringing. Music's such a strong part of, of what I paint and, and how I paint. And uh, I just heard a story. I, I, it's this, I just heard. It's not a story. I just heard about a music teacher in Hollister who they've got 100 kids that, uh, without instruments for band. And there was this one kid that for months, and, and I don't know who else, but I know that this one kid was so dedicated to learn how to play an instrument that, uh, that he was practicing the flute on, on a pencil and learning the fingering like that. And he now has a flute and he's now getting started, but uh, God, that just hit me hard that there were that many children who you know, wanted to create and weren't able to because they didn't have instruments. And it made me think about how blessed I am to have a piano in the house so I can play when I want and to have the art supplies to be able to paint and that the next time I didn't maybe feel like playing the piano, I'm going to kick myself in the rear because here I've got this thing that I can use and there are people that are, that are dying to, to be able to do this. So. Um, I'm on a mission to help <laughs> these kids get instruments. 
And so if you'd like more information or to hear about that, you can email me at shannon at shannongrissom.com and, and I can hook you up with the right people to get these kids some instruments. Now, I think what a perfect thing to paint right now is that, you know, music is such a, if you can imagine every day without, without hearing anything on the radio, these, these kids are, are the future. There's nothing on the, you know, no soundtrack on a movie without music. God, it's just, it just every part of life. I was really lucky growing up. So I got out my clarinets. And um, I'm playing those, and uh, I'm matching people who have instruments at home who may not be using them with, with kids who really, really want to play. Okay, so this pineapple is definitely taking form. Let me give you a little critique at the end of the show here. This is where I'm going to go with this. We have very little time left. The, the biggest flaw about this pineapple here is that this whole left side should have been a lot lighter. And this is good for the middle. And then I could make this darker. So I really am not going to do a lot to the leaves. I'm just going to, when it dries, I will go over this side and continually make it lighter. This will probably be about the same. I will darken this side. That will give it the form. I will continue. The leaves are basically roughed in, so they're, they're not, I don't see that they're problematic. It's just more of finishing what I've started. And that's how I'd finish the pineapple. I really kind of like this just very limited base here and the white background. So I'm going to throw some white paint on the canvas just to cover the canvas, but I'm going to leave it just all natural. So thanks for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. I appreciate you coming back. I'm Shannon Grissom. <laughs>